Once again, we've known the joy of a Christmas pageant performed by members of our Sunday school. I'd like to thank a few of the many people who helped with today's service. Mrs. Emery, director of our Sunday school, and as always, our friend and neighbor, Mr. Sam Todd, who played the organ. Following the benediction, we hope you'll all stay for the fellowship while the children have their candy bags and the Christmas tree. <clears throat> we thank thee, Father, for these children and the homes from which they come. We thank thee for the message that Christmas brings, the gift of the Christ child. May your love, joy, and peace be with us during the Christmas season and always. Amen. <laughs> Well, we've got a white Christmas again, but unless you're traveling by reindeer and sleigh, it's rough going out there. Be sure to drive carefully and fasten your seat belts. The roads are slippery and the traffic is already heavy. Everybody's heading home for the holidays. After all, Christmas time is family time. Time to bring back all those good old traditions. I remember something our family always used to do at Christmas. Back when I was a kid, we used to make gifts for each other. Nothing big, just little homemade tokens to go along with the store-bought presents. My grandmother used to make the kids mittens, you know, with a string that went around our neck so we wouldn't lose them. I still wear mine today, but, you know, all in all, it was kind of a nice custom. You know, it's kind of fun to reminisce about the good old days. That's a luxury we have at the end of the year, indulging in a bit of nostalgia. Hey, if last-minute shopping's bugging you, take a trip to Marcos. Well, good morning, Jonathan. How are you this nice cold morning? Fine. Well, that's good. Your mother's got us slip here. Well, let's see. Now, take some little time, put this up. Two pounds of cheese, pound of coffee, two pounds of yellow eye beans, half peck of peanuts, bottle of Arabian balsam, two yards of red ribbon. <laughs> well, that's quite a variety. Well, why do you, before you sit down to get warm, why don't you have some 
candy here. Take a ride out then. Help yourself. Well, let's see. We'll get the cheese out here first and cut off a couple of pounds of that. See how near I can guess the two pounds. Flap that on the scales here and get this set out here and see how much weighs. Well, yeah, a little over two pounds. Well, no matter. We'll half a pound of coffee. Once it ground, I remember when your father was a little boy, he used to come in here and buy coffee just same as you are, and I used to grind it for him. In the old days, I used to roast the coffee right here, but now they Comes all roasted. Yes, just as good. Smells good, don't it? Guess that's the end of it. Nothing smells much better than some coffee all ground right up fresh. Right in that way. Have all wasted a mite. Now let's see. We got a cheese and a coffee. Next thing's the yellow rye beans. Oh, there goes that darn telephone. Always rings when you're the busiest. Hello. Yes, yes. Oh, this you, Pauline? Yes. Yes, Tess, call morning. Off a go. Uh, what'd you have on your mind? Yes, I know. So Christmas almost here. I don't know. Seems so have one Christmas and first thing you know, it's right around that time again. Yeah, that's right. What was it you wanted, anyway? A half a pound of dry mustard. Well, well, that's right. That's right. Father John's. Father John's, yes. Got that listed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bottle Lady Pinkham. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to ring off on you here because I got a cash, cash customer here that. I'm waiting on too. Yep. There. Ah, get rid of that. It's generally half a day's job, that is. Well, I never be any nearer those beans than I am right now, I guess. So let's see, two pounds. on the button. Well, you might as well have the rest of those. Christmas, you know, we get to be a little bit generous at Christmas time. And a half a peck of peanuts. Uh, John, you want to get me those peanuts right over there in that basket? And bring them right over here for me, that's the boy. I ought to have you around this door here to help for a while. Half peck measure right there. Guess better. Perhaps weigh them too. You get a double check on them. What to call scripture measure, all right. Press down, running over. Better have a handful of those peanuts while you 
Go where you can, Dad, and just... Now, now, um, Arabian balsam was what she wanted. Uh, Sloan's liniment, this Minot's liniment, Johnson's anodyne liniment. That is right there, Arabian balsam. 33 cents, costs quite a lot, but that stuff's good for man or beast, inside or out. Now we have uh, two yards of wide red ribbon. Well, now that ought to be red enough. What's that stuff? Oh, that's what they call tinsel. Salesman fellow, and then their drummers was here from the city. He says they sell a raft of that. I told him I didn't think to sell, but try a little of it and find out. When I was a boy growing up, my mother always used to string popcorn and red cranberries on the string. Then when Christmas was over with, if we get through playing with it, why, you could always eat the popcorn off and you could always cook the cranberries. And that way, you weren't wasting any money, throwing money away. But you tell your mom that if she wants some of that, I'll save it for her and she can have some. It's the perfect toy for your child, absolutely non-toxic, with vinyl head-rooted hair and movable and connected ready-cut magic plastic parts. Be sure to get yours while the supply lasts. And remember, with purchases of $25 or more, you have your choice of a free miniature Christmas tree. Genuine aluminum in gold, silver, pink, or blue. Or with your $25 purchase, a free plastic poinsettia that will not wilt over the holidays. You know you're getting the mark of quality at a markdown price at Markoff's. Open tonight until midnight for your shopping convenience. All right, now we'll have the roll call. Gideon Bigfoot. Here. Jelly Brown. Here. Ebenezer Donovan. Absent. He must be helping his father cut wood this morning. Jonathan Emery. Here. Gertie Leather. Here. Alice Newcomb. Here. Charlie Piper. He's home with a cold. Rose Teague. Here. Ruth Toothaker. Here. All right. Now, since it's Christmas, we're going to sing the very old and well-known <laughs> carol, Away in a Manger. Now, our note to start on is, now listen carefully,
<laughs> you better watch what you're doing. the same for cat's bruise. You didn't leave me many cranberries here, huh? But that's all right, so long as the sauce is good. I'll just put one cranberry to four popcorn. Meant to tell you, Grammy, when I went down street the other day, I met Grover. Oh? <laughs> This is a good batch. It's coming. Oh, my rheumatism is bothering me again. Think I'll just take a little of my Alexa here. There we are. That ought to do it. Mmm, that's good. Mmm, that's much better. Yeah, he said he meant for Jonathan to bring you home some candy. But wouldn't you know that Jonathan gobbled it all up? Can't imagine where that boy puts all he eats. You'd think he'd be as big as a barn. <laughs> Does this bread sound hollow to you, Mama? Mm-hmm, it's probably done. Don't you know, I'll wager that Jonathan got into that package of sweets you did up for Miss Gilmore. She probably never even saw it. No, I guess he cared too much about getting a good grade in arithmetic. She rang me up yesterday to thank us. Said the fudge was as good as ever, and that she still couldn't decide which cookies she liked better, the sugar or the molasses. Did I cut the design right? Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, that's a good story, Sue. I remember when your mother was first baking, she cut the Miller family design by mistake. Theirs looked a lot like ours, and since it was about her first try at pie baking, she'd overlooked something. Forgot the sugar, I think it was. Well, everybody at that church supper thought Mrs. Miller had made it. They weren't in any hurry to eat a Miller pie after that one. <laughs> Susan, go hunt up Jonathan. We need some more kindling. Thought we had enough kindling to hold them a while. Think we need some more? Some. Can't complain, though, not with the cooking they're doing. Did you see the pies? Mmm. There now. See what that does for them. Why do you suppose it is that we always get stuck with this job? Must be that we're so good at it. Now look at that shine, Jonathan. Shows what a little polish and a lot of elbow grease will do. Mm. How many more do we have to do? Got to finish all that is on the table there. While well, you're doing a fine job, Jonathan. Oh, Susan, I almost forgot. The good china has to be washed. Now, back when I was young, we didn't get many toys for Christmas. The main thing was the stocking, even though there wasn't much in it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There, Henry, hold right still now. Henry's looking good, Mother. Yeah, you fattened him up all right. 
Ouch! That water is hot. It would always have an orange and an apple. Maybe some broken candy. The pork's coming along real good, but the chicken needs basting. I sure like the chicken and pork together. Sometimes there would be a handkerchief. The onion got to you, Sue? Wish you'd let me peel the potatoes instead. And if we're really lucky, a picture book. Just a little 10 cent book stuck in at the top, but that was a real treat. Way back when I was young, there were those who'd holler that folks were more concerned with gifts than with the real meaning of Christmas. There, the turnip's done. That should go in the warming oven, too. But there's not enough room. Well, take the squash pie out for now. We'll warm it up again later. Well, maybe there's more toys and things around today, and more folks have money to buy. On the outside, things change. But I figure what's best about Christmas is the family. After a day's work, just celebrating together. We thank thee, O oh Lord, for this food. Bless it to our use. Help us to grow in the strength of it, to love and serve thee as we should. Amen. Maybe when you get to be my age, you'll feel the same way, that it means a lot to take special notice of a day and of the people you love. Like me, Jonathan? I love white meat and I love the wishbone. All right, you may have the wishbone. Grammy, you need some sauce. You don't have to have gifts. You can show your feeling with or without gifts, with or without money. Just so long as you still have that feeling, you still have Christmas. That doesn't change. Ah. Uh...